Manga Wido. My name is Sori Nishida. I've been working for my company for around six years now. I was transferred to another department recently, and so I just joined this new department. Just as I started to get comfortable with my lovely colleagues, I realized that this one female colleague had her eyes on me. Her name is Kasano-san. She's in her late 30s, and from what I've heard, she's been working in the same department since she started working here. She's known to be competent and really knowledgeable in her field that sometimes even my boss asks her for help. In the first two weeks or so, she was being really nice to me, and she taught me the ropes in the new department, so I was so happy. But there was this one guy who was known to be the most good-looking guy in the department called Kitagawa-kun, also started talking to me. And when she saw how nice he was being to me, that was when her attitude toward me completely flipped and everything took a turn for the worse. Apparently, she has a huge crush on him. Hey, nice work, Nishita. So, have you settled down with your new role then? Huh? Yeah, everyone's so nice to me and I love it here. <sighs> ah, I'm glad to hear that. So hey, I got these snacks from my clients. Feel free to take them and have some when you're on your break. Oh, thanks. Apparently Kasano-san overheard this conversation between us. Just because Kitagawa-kun was nice to you, don't get too carried away, you cow. Hmm. What? I'm not. There's a misunderstanding here. Oh, I know. Why don't we have some of the snacks together? What the hell? Just because he gave it to you doesn't mean you have to shove it in my face and boast. Ugh, you're so annoying. She became so cranky and sulky since then, and her bullying just kept getting more and more frequent. Hey guys, you know how we need to send off that tool to our client? I'm looking for an envelope to put it in, but I can't find any. Do you see any lying around somewhere? Hey, Kasano-san, do you know where the envelopes are? Oh, I think I saw Nishida-san take it somewhere together with the box that it came in. Um, no, I don't think I did, actually. Are you absolutely sure about that? You told me that you've been making some side money by selling things on that auction app. Perhaps you stole some envelopes from the office to use it to send things off for that, no? No way! I would never steal office supplies! It turned out that the envelopes were in the box that was placed on a shelf in a random room that nobody really goes into. Everyone wondered why and how it got there. Kasano-san, I think I saw you enter this room yesterday. Are you sure you didn't come in to hide this and put the blame on me instead? What? No, not at all. Someone else probably put it there by accident. It wasn't me. What is with you? Why are you always trying to make me look like the bad one? Maybe it was you who did it to make everyone blame me. No, I would never do that. Hey guys, let's all calm down. At least we found it, right? Let's not sweat the small things and get back to work, eh? Kitagawa-san consoled us with a smile that made him look even more handsome than he usually is. That Kasano-san blushed and said, Well, if you say so, Kitagawa-kun, and blushed it all under the rug. But even after this incident, she still kept making her little traps to get me into trouble. This is urgent. You better get it now and submit it ASAP. Wait, but look at this huge pile! Are you expecting me to finish all this by the end of the day? Sure, you're not complaining, are you? This is nothing compared to the amount of work I had to do when I just started working for this department. Anyway, I have to visit my grandfather at the hospital, so I'm off. You can handle this on your own, right? Bye! And with that, she left. Then, the next day... Did you actually work all night doing this? <laughs> well, yes, because you said it was urgent. Well, you didn't have to work all night just to finish this. You knew that we're trying to stick to the quota of zero hours of overtime this month. So, how do you think that'll affect our results? Stop creating more problems for us. She just wants to humiliate me in front of everyone, as if to say, you dumbass. I know I should have checked the deadline too, but she was the one who didn't specify anything. This is her fault. My colleague said, oh, come on, she did her best, so why do you have to be so hard on her? Let her off. And was on my side. Kitagawa-kun was also on my side, too, so I felt better about the whole situation. But to Kasano-san, it only made her feel worse to see me have more backup. 
so what she did next was so evil. She stalked me on social media channels and tried to conspire against me. <laughs> hey, I found something so wonderfully interesting. You used to be a bit of a troublemaker back in the day, weren't you? <laughs> what? What she's trying to say is that because I actually really know someone who used to be in a gang, and because I live near her, she thinks I'm one too. That's according to her books, though. I was so curious, so I looked into it, and it looks like this lady, Akiko, went by this name, Duramichan, and was the leader of a certain gang, right? I know you live in the same neighborhood as her, and look at this photo of you two together. You must have caused a lot of trouble back in the day too, right? How awful. I mean, yeah, Akiko and I have the same hobbies, so we meet up often, but I met her after she left the gang. I never have been and never will be a member of a gang like that. But that still doesn't change the fact that you're friends with a former gang leader, right? Ooh, how scary. I'm scared. Are you gonna hurt me if I come near you? <laughs> I thought, what the hell? How does this make any sense? But I thought it was best not to say anything and ignore what she said here. But I guess that's where I went wrong. I should have set the facts straight, right then and there, because after that, she spread rumors telling people how I was so violent and that I was nothing but a troublemaker. Well, I doubt anyone believes that. <laughs> Some of my colleagues were nice enough to protect me and tell her, you shouldn't talk about your colleague behind their backs. Whether that triggered her or not, I'm not sure, but that only led to devise another conspiracy against me. That day was the big day for our team to give a presentation for an important client. Our careers depended on getting them to sign a new contract with us. So everyone was nervous and stressed out. The presentation was in the afternoon, so we spent the morning going over the presentation with everyone, but... Hey, Nishida-san, the data we need for the presentation, where is it? It's gone, all of it. What? Oh my God, she's right. The files should be in this folder, but they're not. Nishida-san, you've caused even more problems here for all of us. What are you going to do to make up for this mess, hmm? Well, let's be honest. A former delinquent like you shouldn't even be working for a well-known company like ours anyway. So why don't you just... Um, well, sorry to say, but if you're talking about that data, it was the manager's responsibility, not mine. I mean, yes, I was the one who handled the data to a certain point, but then he took over from me halfway through. And he even said that he got approval from the big boss after that. What? No, that's a lie! And besides, I don't have any rights to edit that file anymore either. Only people in the upper management have the rights to make edits, not me. And I think you were the only one in upper management who stayed at the office after we left last night, right? Did you delete the data on file on purpose, thinking that you could get me fired? By any chance? If that's the case, then I have to say that that's a very bald move. No, 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 what? No, no, there's been a mistake. I had no idea that the manager had it. I just thought, I just thought that you would get into trouble for it, and that was all I was thinking. Oh, gosh. I wasn't sure if it was good timing or bad, but just then, our manager showed up from his meeting and found out about everything that had been going on. Our manager is usually super kind and generous, but after hearing this, he got so mad at Kasano-san that she turned as white as a ghost in disbelief. No, I'm so sorry. This wasn't meant to turn out like this. Oh, God, there's no use in crying. It's not like the data will miraculously turn up, will it? I still have some of the data saved on my PC. Hey, you've got to tell us what we should be doing here. Everyone was just in shock and upset, but when they heard what I said, they realized that they'd better get back to work. And so we all started to work on making the presentation materials from scratch. Fortunately, our manager also had some of the data saved, so we were able to get everything done in an hour and a half before the actual presentation. The presentation was a success, and we got a signed deal with our client. I sincerely apologize from the bottom of my heart. This is all my fault. I take full responsibility for what happened. Kasana-san expressed her intent to submit a resignation letter as a way to compensate for the problems she caused. 
But the manager said, if you think you're responsible, then make up for it by working extra hard for us, which was a kind-hearted piece of advice. So in the end, no one quit, no one was fired, and Kasana-san is still working with us now. Apparently, she used to be this excellent and competent member of the team until I came. And it seemed like she really felt remorseful, which is what I think led to the manager's decision to not have her resign. But of course, a portion of her bonus was cut back, but that was a given. And since then, it was as if she had a change of heart and she no longer harassed me like she used to. I'm sorry. I guess I just got overly jealous seeing you and Kitagawa-kun get closer and I just lost my mind. I can't apologize to you enough. Um, Kasana-san? Sorry, I know I haven't told you this before, but the reason why Kitogawa-kun and I are close is because we're cousins. What? Well, it's a bit complicated, but we're not related by blood, but because of his mom who remarried, we're distant cousins, if that makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, my point is that I'm sorry if I made you think we were going out or something. It was all a misunderstanding. When I explained everything, Kasano-san looked so relieved. Since then, Kasano-san has been teaching me a lot of things at work and has been helping me out a lot. She even said to our manager that she thinks I'm capable of handling contracts with bigger clients, which is great. I really felt like she had changed a lot, so I started to feel more comfortable and open up to her a lot more. Then one day, when I had a huge presentation to give our client, Perhaps because of all the pressure and stress, my body gave out, and I suddenly got caught with a high fever. Oh crap, I've got to make this presentation a success, no matter what. If I miss this, I might not get another opportunity. So I went into the office reluctantly with my high fever, but I was feeling so out of it and couldn't think straight. And when I stood up from my desk, I felt dizzy and weak. But it was Kasano-san who grabbed me and stopped me from falling to the floor. Oh my gosh, you're so hot! You've got such a high fever! I knew there was something wrong. You didn't look right. Listen, I know what your presentation is about, so don't worry. I'll cover for you. Go and get some rest instead. Take it easy. Kasano-san. And with that, just like we all knew she would, she aced the presentation and it succeeded in getting us a new deal. Not only that, but she gave all the credits to me, and because of that, I got complimented by everyone, including my manager. This made us grow even closer as friends, and we started hanging out more often outside of work. We went drinking, and we invited each other around to our houses and stuff. Then one day, Kitagawa-kun came up to us and asked if he could come drinking with us one day. That's when I thought, ooh, this could be good. So I set the two of them up so that they could spend more time together alone. And what do you know, a few months later, they were a couple. I've always admired how mentally strong she is. And of course, she's so beautiful. Sometimes she gets a bit intense, but I actually find that endearing. Nishida-san, this is all thanks to you. I'm so very happy. The following year, Kitagawa-kun and Kasano-san got married. I would have never thought in a million years that I'd become related to Kasana-san. Kasana-san looked absolutely gorgeous in her wedding dress. I loved it. It made me so excited for me to meet the man of my dreams one day too. But until that day comes, I'm gonna work my ass off and do a good job with it. My name is Koichi. I'm 32. I'm a pure introvert, and I had trouble making friends and speaking my mind back when I was in school. However, I'm working now. I'm thankful my boss accepts me for who I am as long as I get good results back to him. Although I haven't gotten any better at making friends, I enjoy work. Despite being an introvert, I think I have a rather fulfilling life. However, one day, my life changed completely. Yo, is that you, Koichi? What? Akira? Why are you here? Why am I here? I was headhunted by this company. I can't believe I ran into you here. We should get along, for old time's sake. This is Akira. We used to go to university together. He seems to think that we get along well, but I've never liked him. He doesn't care about others, as long as he gets his way. Akira has a nice smile. He's quite handsome. Plus, his father is a powerful being who has many connections. He used to play guitar in a band and was quite popular with the girls. As you can see, 
He acts friendly. Akira was always in the middle of the crowd. I spent most of my days watching Akira and his friends from far away. There was no place for me there. One day, Akira surprised me by talking to me. Hey, we seem to take a lot of the same classes. I'd like to get to know you better. I'm so bored in class since none of my other friends are around. Huh? Uh, okay. Sure. At first he was kind and seemed sincere. Akira's friends were nice to me, and they let me in immediately. I thought that my life had changed for the better. However, the good times didn't last long. Akira started using me at his convenience whenever he felt like it. He would skip class and then borrow my notes to copy. He would also ask me to write in the attendance list so the teacher wouldn't notice he was gone. Whenever he suggested having a party, I was the one who had to find and reserve the place. Akira even asked me to write his senior thesis for him before we graduated. The worst was when he asked me about the girl I liked, just so he could go hit on her. I know what you're all thinking. I should have cut ties with him and his group if I didn't like how they treated me. However, Akira was the only one who treated me horribly. The others were all kind. To be honest, I didn't dare to leave the group just to be alone again. I endured the humiliation somehow, telling myself that I would only have to deal with it until I graduated. I had finally gotten free, but there he was, standing confidently in front of me again. I felt like running far away. I didn't want to go through all of it again. On top of everything, Akira came up to me telling something that shocked me to my bones. You know, I'm dating the CEO's daughter, and we're planning to get married. You're talking to the next CEO right now. This can't be true. He has much more power than he did back in university. I just know he's going to use it to the fullest. Just as I expected, Akira started forcing his work on me. But he made sure nobody noticed. Koichi? Can you get this finished for me? Oh, about that complaint from the client. I can't stay any later, so you'll have to deal with it for me. Huh? Hey! Akira made sure everybody took his side. He always thanked me in front of everybody, along with a speech about how grateful he was. All the other employees who saw it would say, I heard they met at university. Isn't it great how they're helping each other out? Nobody saw through him. He fooled them all. However, I'm not the same pathetic student he picked on. I decided to fight back. I need, I need to, to collect, collect every piece, piece of evidence so that I can file a report against him. But for the time being, I decided to play along. I never complained, and I obeyed everything he said. My friend act worked. Akira started to open up about private information. Just between you and me, I have a few other girlfriends. I knew it! Akira started using me to make up alibis whenever he wanted to meet with his other girlfriends. I reserved hotel rooms saying it was for a business meeting. I also drove him to the hotels and back. He even rented a room from the apartment I lived at, so he could use it with girls. He would call me to pick him up whenever he planned on meeting one of them. He wanted me to be there when walking into the apartment. That way, he would be able to explain that the three of us were meeting in my room. Hey man, thanks for this. No problem. I couldn't believe how rotten he was. But I never let it show. Please, read the contract, and see if there are no problems with it. Thank you. I'll check through it now. Akira used me for business meetings, but he would take credit for every client that signed the contract. It was no surprise when he was announced as the employee with the best work performance. Soon after, the CEO officially announced his plans for the company. Okay, listen up everybody. Akira will be marrying my precious daughter soon. As you know, I am getting quite old. I'm thinking of asking Akira to take over when I decide to leave. Congratulations! Wow, I am so jealous of you! Thanks, guys. We're having the wedding early next year, so I would like to invite all of you. Koichi, nothing would make me happier than to have you make the speech. Huh? Me? Yep. Please, say yes. I bet everybody watching was thinking this was an emotional moment. A guy asking his best friend to make a speech at the wedding. I saw how everybody was smiling broadly at us, and I even heard a few applauding. I realized, this could be the best thing that could happen to me. Okay, I would be honored to do it. I accepted his offer to do the speech. Akira, I missed you. Congratulations, I heard you're the next CEO. 
Thank you. I miss you so much. Even after his marriage with the CEO's daughter was announced, he kept meeting up with the other girls in my apartment building. It was disgusting. However, one night... Huh? Why are you here? <laughs> I was out with some of my girlfriends, and I found myself wanting to see you. The doorbell rang, and I opened the door to see one of Akira's girlfriends standing outside. What are you talking about? You're Akira's girlfriend. You shouldn't be here. Things aren't going so great with Akira anymore. I don't think I have feelings for him anymore. I realize that Akira is a player, and I need somebody more sincere and genuine to love me. You know, somebody like you. What? Hey, cut it out! The next moment, the girl suddenly leaped forward and hugged me. This... This is all too sudden. You can't just come here expecting me to fall for you like that. I pushed her away. Tears flowed from her eyes as she confessed why she was acting that way. But how am I going to raise this baby all of my own? What? The girl spilled everything. She told me she was pregnant with Akira's child, but he denied being the father. He broke up with her because of it. He made sure she wouldn't tell anybody about their relationship by threatening her. He said he would use all the money he could to crush her life. In the end, Akira advised the girl to make a move on me. Apparently, I would be easy to win over since I was a loser. He also mentioned that I would marry her and care for her and her child if she told me she was pregnant after sleeping with me. I knew he was scum, but I didn't think he would go this far. I checked with Akira a few days later and he admitted to ending the relationship with the girl. Hey, why don't you comfort her? She's a great catch. I will never forget the smirk on his face when he said that. You won't be smiling like that for too long. I smiled back at him and changed the subject. It was time to get ready for revenge. Finally, the day of Akira's wedding arrived. An unbelievable number of people were attending the wedding. Friends, Akira's family, the bride's family, all of the company employees, and so on. The wedding was going great, and it was my time to make the speech. I was called up to the mic, and I stood in front of it. I started the speech with a congratulations to the groom and bride. I met Akira back in university. He was always the happy guy in the middle of the crowd. He was trusted by many friends. We all admired how intelligent and sociable he was. Akira looked satisfied with my speech. I could see all the guests smiling at me. However, he was also very sneaky. None of my friends knew this, but he showed me his darkest side. I could tell everybody was starting to feel uneasy. It's my turn now. I blurted everything Akira had done to me without pausing for a second. I saw the color drain from Akira's face as he started to panic. My best memory with Akira was when he paid me to write his senior thesis. It still holds a big place in my heart. Hey! Koichi! What are you doing?! I have total respect for him. Nobody else is shameless enough to take credit for every contract I got signed. Oh, I almost forgot! I had so much fun whenever he met up with his other girlfriends. I was so honored when he asked me to help him set up an alibi for when he cheated on the beautiful bride. Akira stood up yelling out how I was lying. I ignored him and went into the details of his affairs. I could see the whole room was in chaos. The CEO and his relatives looked stunned when they found out Akira was playing them all along. That's enough from you! Where's the proof, huh? I have the proof right here, Akira. I pulled out the tablet I had hidden earlier and showed everybody the screen. The screen showed the results of a DNA test. It was proof that Akira was the father of his ex-girlfriend's baby. I called Akira out to meet me to discuss the details of my speech. But it was a ploy so I could obtain Akira's cigarette butt. I used it to get the DNA test done. What the? When did you? Oh, there's more to this story, you see. When Akira found out about the baby, he first denied being the father. Then he threatened to ruin the girl's life if she ever told anybody and brutally tossed her out of his life. He then advised her to seduce me into sleeping with her. How kind. He wanted to make sure the baby ended up with a father. Let's listen to how caring he was. 
There was no way Akira could bluff his way through with all the evidence out in the open. Everyone was horrified to find out what kind of person he was. I can't believe you did this. You vermin! Scum! The wedding is off! You are fired! And you better not come near my daughter ever again! The CEO and his relatives stormed up to Akira and started yelling at him. Others stood up to watch, and some even left. Talk about a wrecked wedding. I left as well before any of the drama reached me. Farewell, Akira. After that, Akira was kicked out of the company and his family disowned him. He was forced to accept that he was the father since the proof was right there in his face. I heard he works at a small company now. He lives a miserable life, making child support payments to his ex-girlfriend. Most of his salary is spent on it, and he's forced to live a poor life. As for me, I made sure I prepared everything so I wouldn't have to suffer any consequences. I quit the company soon after, and I'm working in the sales department for a different company now. I still remember how devastated I felt when I first saw Akira walk into the office. But not only did I get my revenge, but I also ended up with a rewarding job with better pay. Seeing how everything panned out for me, maybe I should thank him when I see him again. Not that I'm planning to, ever in my life again. My name is Shinsuke. I'm an average guy, and I have a younger brother who's good-looking and built. His name is Soma. Although I'm older, Soma was already taller than me by kindergarten, and people often mistake him for my older brother. Soma was very athletic from an early age. He was very good at soccer, basketball, karate, kendo, and everything else, so our parents always praised him for it. By the time I was in elementary school, Soma started calling me a loser and a nerd, making fun of me. Soma would play good when he was around adults, so I was the only one who knew his true nature. Give me some money! I'm going to the candy store with my friends! He has your own allowance! I already spent it all! Unlike you, I have a lot of friends, you know! I had to go out and socialize! I'm saving up to buy video games! I'm not giving you any! Just give it to me! Hey, stop! I was no match for his strength, and he took my wallet. I told my parents, but... He's your younger brother. Don't be so uptight. They wouldn't do anything about it. I had the money in the back of the closet, so I didn't have to worry about that again. By the time I was in junior high, I hardly talked to so many more. Soma had a lot of friends, and he kept up with karate and soccer, so he wasn't home much. Thanks to that, I could play games, read manga, and just relax. But that peace didn't last long. I don't see my console. Soma, is it you? Yeah, I borrowed it for a bit. I used it when we all party together. Give it back! It's my precious console I saved up for! About that! My senpai took it, I don't know where it is now! What?! I was gonna ask for it back, but the guys Soma hung out with were notorious at school for being delinquents. Those guys would beat up a skinny guy like me without hearing a word I say. Time passed while I was hesitating, and six months later, the console came back battered and unusable. I tried telling my parents, but... Why don't you just use your savings to buy it again? They still didn't take me seriously at all. I was so angry that I wanted to punch Soma in the face. By this time, there was already a 20 centimeter height difference between Soma and I. There was no way I could beat Soma who was still practicing karate. And in the end, I cried myself to sleep. I put a lock on the door so that Soma could never enter. As expected, Soma didn't break into the room and I was able to live in peace for a while. But, Soma did it again. We went to different universities, but to my luck, the campuses were very close. Students from both schools would come and go to interact. One day, I was talking to a girl I liked from my club at a cafe, when Soma came up to me. Hey bro, who's this girl? She's so cute! Hey Soma, cut it out! Don't mess with Mika-san! So your name's Mika! That's a cute name! Hey, wanna hang out with me sometime? After that, Soma met up with Mika-san at the right timing and... I'm going out with Mika-chan! Were you going for her? If so, my bad! They became a couple before I knew it. This is when my relationship with Mika-san became awkward, and it became difficult to stay in the club. 
My college life didn't go well after that, and it was over just like that. Soma's habit of one-upping me still persisted even after we entered the workforce. Only at 30 employees? You must work for a sad company. A salary of 250,000 yen? Aren't you ashamed with that kind of salary? He would talk all he wanted. With his boastful nature, Soma was always running out of money, buying brand name suits and luxury bags. I often saw him asking our parents for money. You're a working man. Aren't you ashamed of asking money from your parents? I'm a social butterfly. I get invited to barbecues and camping trips every week, so I have no money. I don't have a choice. Or are you jealous of me for getting money from mom and dad? Frankly, I was angry at my parents for still spoiling Soma. But I'm an adult now. I've almost saved up enough money to rent an apartment and live on my own. If I get rid of this house, I can cut ties from everything. With that in mind, I kept putting up with Soma. A short time later, I moved out. And for about three years, I was able to live comfortably on my own. But then, my kryptonite. What do you want? Let me borrow some money! Soma called me anxiously. Apparently, he proposed to his girlfriend, but was turned down due to his lack of savings. That's what you get for going out constantly! I would never lend you money! Eventually, Soma told her, I'm gonna take the inheritance of this family sooner or later. My father is a wealthy man, so he'll plenty of money. Don't break up with me! And stopped her from leaving. I was honestly stunned that he could say such a thing when our parents were still in their 60s. The talk about inheritances was still a long ways away. But what Soma said came into existence. And our parents fell down a cliff after their car slipped on the way home from a trip to a snowy area. Both my father and mother died instantly. I cried. My parents were cold to me, but still. While we were carrying out the coffin, I caught Soma grinning. The inheritance! I want it all! What are you talking about all of a sudden? It's only been a week since they're passing! I looked it up! It says you need to sign the inheritance waiver within three months of their debt! What? You. I knew you were staring at your phone at the funeral, but I didn't think you were thinking about that! Do you hear me? Sign the inheritance waiver! I'm the one Dad loved more, and I'm going to get married, so I need the money! You know what'll happen if you say otherwise. I'll KO a scrawny little guy like you in one shot! The look in his eyes were serious. This guy's insane. He's really doing it. With a deep sigh, I said, All right, I don't want any trouble, so I'll sign it. Soma smiled and said, That's great, thank you! And slapped me on the back. I shuddered just thinking about the force he would hit me with if I had refused. After that, I consulted a lawyer who was close to my father, and we went through the process of wavering the inheritance. Now the inheritance is mine! You've renounced it officially, so I'm not sharing you any of it, even if you ask. Oh, I won't ask you to share. Thanks for taking the whole thing. <laughs> you did me a favor. Huh? Did you a favor? What do you mean? I laugh after completing all the paperwork. Honestly, it was hard to hold back my laughter for this long. The apartment you inherited isn't worth anything, while the property taxes are ridiculously high. On top of that, the walls and roof are falling apart because Dad neglected the repairs. So what? Dad used to complain a lot when he was drunk. You probably didn't know since you were never home. The number of tenants in that apartment building are decreasing because it's so shabby. And from what I hear, there's hardly any rental income. What? You're kidding, right? Dad managed to pay the property taxes every year by selling the watches and brand name bags he bought when he was younger. It's a money-sucking property to say the least. No, but if I at least sell this house and the land, I could make tens of millions. Of course not. This house is in shambles and the land is worth a few million at best. In fact, it costs a lot to clear the land, so there's possibility you would lose money. In short, both this house and the apartment are unfavorable inheritances. I'm just glad you're covering it. What? Then what am I supposed to do? I don't know. I've already passed everything over to you. You're on your own now. See ya! I said that and walked away from him. I went back to my place and got ready to move out tomorrow. 
I've already prepared my new house in case he comes crashing asking for money. Selma then got rejected by his girlfriend, leaving him with a wrecked apartment and his worthless home. He eventually sold both, but the apartment was old and unrepaired, so it was sold for a bargain. And the house cost a lot of money to clear the land. On top of that, my mother had borrowed money from a relative behind my father's back. And when she paid it back, she was left with only a few hundred thousand in the end. Help me! Let me live in your place! I don't want to. Why don't you ask your friends? They all blocked me when they found out I had no money! Hey, you're my brother! Help me out, bro! Soma was frequently absent from work due to inheritance procedures. And when the parents passed, he drunkenly said, I'm glad they're dead! These words got around in the company and made it hard for him to stay, so he resigned. I heard he's living with no money in a shabby apartment while making ends meet with his part-time job. There's no way I'm helping him, and I hope he learns to struggle. I'm living a comfortable life in the apartment I moved to. Work's going great. I just happened to run into a girl I went to high school with, and things are looking good. I'm going to cut off all the bad relationships and enjoy my life to the fullest. My name is Satomu Morioka. I'm 35 years old. I work as a chief operator of a printing company's factory. I know it's not exactly modest to me, but I think with my position now, I have a bright future ahead of me. Thanks to that, I'm also responsible for the fire prevention, security, and other kinds of things within the factory. December is our busiest month of the year, and things were all very hectic. As we approach the New Year's, they'll become even more so. We were using our rotary offset press like crazy, and we were printing not only this year's, but next year's advertisements as well. Most of them will be loaded onto the 10-ton truck for shipping. The factory was like a war zone, all our divisions like sales, production, printing, and processing were in chaos. One mistake could lead to a huge delay. I need to make sure not to make a mistake so that we won't be forced to reprint everything. We would be in big trouble if we didn't make the deliveries on time. Because it was such a busy season, the van that always came to the factory in the late afternoon was making our workers irritated. My junior co-worker, Takahashi from the sales division, came to the factory while I was working and complained. The van came again! The one that parks here illegally? I wonder how many times they've done it this time? Maybe it's the second time? Since the beginning of last month, a black van had been repeatedly parking itself within the factory's grounds illegally. Our factory is rather large and there are many empty parking spaces. But of course, they are basically off limits to outsiders. I know who the van's driver is. He's got a tattoo on his arm and is a big guy. He seems like he would be particularly difficult to deal with. Should we paste a paper that's written no parking allowed? You can paste the papers all over the car. Don't do that. If the van gets scratched or dirtied, we would be at fault. This was inevitable when dealing with illegally parked cars. If you touch their car, we could be accused by the car's owner. Goodness. The Japanese law is just crazy. Previously, we did contact the police to discuss this problem, and they came to warn the driver. But a few days later, he would show up again. There was also a co-worker who worked up his courage to go warn the driver. But the driver was such an idiot. I just parked it here for a second! Don't be so stingy! You've got tons of open space here! Although this driver was at fault, he kept on shouting at my co-worker. I have a friend who works in the real estate business. He has a wide network of people, and since he also knows people who are on the outskirts of society, I knew I could rely on him. I asked him what I should do regarding this idiot who parks his van on the factory's grounds illegally. I told him we didn't know how to deal with this problem. It was smart of you not to touch this guy's car. If you had scratched it by accident, he could have made things very difficult for you. I see. I thought the same. Apparently, there are those who provoke unsuspecting people and have them damage the car just so they can accuse them for it. According to my friend's own experience, the best thing to do is to continue reporting it to the police. Make sure to note the license plate number, card type, and color. And don't hesitate to report to the police again and again. That's annoying. And I guess there's no other way. As the representative of the factory, I continue to report it to the police. The police came quickly each time. The idiot didn't seem to be bothered when the police warned him. This didn't solve the problem itself. One part of our parking area is located next to a private house. 
Most of the residents of this neighborhood put up with the factory noise because we're located on the border of the industrial and residential parts of town. He also tried to avoid working nighttime and to reduce the level of noise as much as possible. However, this time, our residential neighbors started to complain about that van idiot. Please do something about this, really. My child is preparing for his entrance exam. According to this neighbor, the idiot plays the music so loud in his van that the whole neighborhood can hear it. I hadn't known that since I spent the day inside the noisy factory. I didn't realize this. Other employees began to voice their dissatisfaction with the situation. The guy like that keeps on coming in and out of our factory grounds. What do our clients think? It could ruin our reputation. It was true that if our clients thought that we were connected to such idiots, our business could suffer. Things were getting pretty bad now. We really needed to do something about it. I decided to gather my courage and to go talk directly to this idiot. In the late afternoon, the van came into our grounds while playing music with the bass that could be felt in our stomach. There was a woman riding on the passenger seat. The two of them seemed to be having a grand time. When I approached the van, oh, they're doing it! It was getting dark outside, but incredible that they could do something like that while parking their van illegally on private grounds. After the unnatural shaking of the van stopped and things calmed down, I knocked on the window. Hello, excuse me. Do you have a minute? Please don't park here. What? What the hell? Who do you think you are talking to me like that, you bastard? Yikes. You stinks of alcohol. Did you drive in this state? What? Don't say funny things. My girlfriend drove the car here, of course. Then why are you sitting in the driver's seat? I don't know what that woman thought, but she pointed her finger at me and started laughing. <laughs> hey, you there. You look freaked out. A bit blue in the face as well. Well, I'm not surprised. When I come near this window, the inside of the car just stinks rotten. You bastard! How dare you talk to me like that? I'll call my buddies, yeah? With his slurred speech, he told me that he's allegedly a famous member of a mafia group around here. One of the leaders of the Manwa group is a friend of mine. He's got friends who are cops. We got nothing to worry about. I started to get sick and tired of all this. I understand. Seems like you just won't get off our grounds. But I'll have you know that we are now closing down for the holiday season. What the hell? For our love, there are no holidays. Oh, honey, do you want to do it one more time? The talk was going nowhere. It was so infuriating that I didn't want to deal with them anymore. I left without a word. Inside the factory, the machines had all nearly been cleaned and the floor swept. Takahashi from the sales division came down to wish me happy holidays. They were doing it? Oh, wow. Then what do you think we should do? Today's the last work day of the year, but we should lock the place up and leave. Shutters? Of course we'll shut them. I don't care what happens to those guys. I'm also responsible for managing the shutters at the factory's main entrance. Before I left, I made sure that every door and window was properly locked. After that, I pushed the button to close the shutters down. Have a happy new year! I won't be opening these shutters until next year when work would begin again. I caught Takahashi as he came out of the office. The thing we were talking about earlier, is that all set? Of course, it's all set up. It'll be live streamed, live streamed. It'll be great. We both wished each other a happy new year and left work. On that evening, I received a call from the factory security company. We're contacting you as there's been a problem regarding the security of your company. I understand. Thank you for contacting me. I'll be on my way. When I got to the factory, the security company had already arrived. There were also security guards in full uniform standing ready, waiting for me. It seems that someone tried to open the shutters by force. Also, the door next to it. Oh! The door's lock's been broken by something. This is why the alarm went off. They had helped themselves to the factory's crowbar and screwdriver and just left them lying there. The car was also left on the factory grounds. The idiot couple was not there. The security company's personnel recommended me to report the incident to the police. The police came right away. With the police sirens, the place became very noisy. A few hours later, that idiot couple was found wandering around in the city and was arrested. 
police brought the idiot back to the factory. As soon as he saw me, he looked ready to bite my head off. Hey, you! You shut the shutters, didn't you? I won't forget what you did to us! You think we'll just let this one pass? I'll make sure you spend the worst New Year's of your life! Oh, really? Well, I don't think you'll be able to greet a New Year's as usual either. I had long ago reached the end of my patience. This idiotic couple needs to be punished. With this video as our proof, we will officially be bringing charges against you. With that, I showed the idiotic couple the video on my smartphone. Oh my god! This is so embarrassing! Why is our car being filmed? The woman covered her face. The video showed the black van shaking up and down. What is this? When did you do such a thing? How dare you record such a thing, you bastard! If we're to press charges, we need proof that you've been illegally parking your car here. That's why we recorded it. I didn't directly record this with my smartphone. Takahashi had set up a surveillance camera for this recording. The recorded video was then saved on my smartphone and Takahashi's computer. We had already submitted to the security company as well. With that, we officially brought charges against this idiot. We were nervous though, since he had mentioned he had connections to the Mafia. But it's easy to let the fear get to us. We found out later the guy had no connections to the Mafia. My friend from the real estate business had contacted the Mafia group and confirmed it for me. They told me they were going to take revenge for using their name and deceiving you guys. Later, the idiot was fined. Of course, that was not the end of the story. The idiot was chased all over town by the Mafia group for having used their name. And finally, he had to skip town with barely nothing but for the clothes he had on him. From what I heard later, the guy escaped together with that flashy woman up north from here. Cold days will continue up there. I hope they'll survive such days. I imagine how the guy would be doing hard manual labor. As for the woman... With that, the idiot who had illegally been parking his van was gone, and things became peaceful again in our company. For now, I'm happy that I'll be able to enjoy my New Year's holiday. My name is Naoya Yamazaki. I work as a high school graduate in a small company. My parents are very toxic, and they've been pestering me to bring in money for the family as soon as I was in high school. They took my part-time money, and as soon as I started working full-time, they started taking money from me without my permission. If I rebelled, they would abuse me and take things that I considered important to destroy. I eventually learned to just keep my mouth shut. This is payment for us raising you! Kids do everything for their parents. Give us your money. This is how I basically continued having no money and I couldn't even start living alone. The company I worked at was also terrible. They were such a dark company that I never got paid for working overtime and never got a promotion. I worked late every day and I even went in to work on the holidays. People who complained were fired immediately and no one was able to say anything out of fear. We just had to keep quiet and work. Even people who were capable would end up getting scolded for one reason or another. Yamazaki, I asked you to finish this! Um, I didn't receive directions on what to do. You really think you should be talking back to me? I'm sorry, sir. I'll get on it right away. You should have said that the first time around! You're useless! I always thought I wanted to work there, but there was probably no chance for me to find another job with my resume. I can't even go back in time to go to a social services office because by the time I'm free, everything is closed. They had me exactly where they wanted. I figured this is how I died, alone and poor. Well, there's my bonus. I'll buy some meat, I guess. I had about $150 for my bonus. This is worse than an elementary schooler's New Year's gift. I ordered a 3,000 yen steak at a nice steak shop. This was the best that I could do at the time. I was so sad and the meat was so delicious that I couldn't help but tear up. <sighs> Guess I'll go home. Hmm? Who's that? I saw a young girl on the benches of the park. Maybe she tripped or something. She had mud around her skirt and knees. You know, there are a lot of delinquents in this area probably shouldn't be here alone at night. I was acting brave after having a great meal and drinking some. Apparently, she was in high school. I was actually robbed and I don't have any money or a phone. Where do you live? I live six stations away. I left without telling my parents, so I can't exactly just ride a taxi home. 
Here, use this. You can still take the train, right? Huh? One hundred dollars? I can't take that. That's all I have. And I use it on this. I only have some change. I showed her the bag with the pudding that I bought after my steak. She looked at me doe-eyed. She grinned and said thank you before bowing ever so gently. I swear, I will pay you back. Don't worry about it. Go, it's late. The last train is leaving. Oh, really? Yeah, I should go. Thank you so much, sir. I will never forget what you did for me. She looked at the clock at the park and realized what time it is. She swiftly ran to the station. <sighs> there goes my bonus. She told me she'd repay me, but it's not like we exchanged numbers. Whatever. Hopefully her future is brighter than mine. That gives my life some meaning. I was all happy and fulfilled when I headed to the station to catch the last train home. Of course, my parents kept asking me for money and my bonus. I was abused, obviously. I kept working at the terrible company and getting chewed out. My parents never stopped taking money from me and I never got any promotions. At least I'm alive. I don't care about my life anymore. My salary was basically the new employee pay with a tiny bump. Only the people who kiss the boss's ass are able to get promotions. I was just working with no end in sight. I was in my 30s and my heart was completely empty. Then I met someone. I ended work early and was heading home. I felt like I was lucky because I could go home early when... Damn it! That hurt! Are you even paying attention? I ran into a thug on my way home. Uh, I'm sorry. You think sorry's gonna cut it? My shoulder is broken! You better ask for compensation. Compensation? You're fine. You wanna go? Let's go, you loser! Uh, hey, call them too! Let's all beat them up! Yeah, I'm calling them now! Seriously? These two are plenty scary by themselves. They're calling their friends. My life was always rough, but I guess this is how I die. Pity. I really was so unlucky. I wish I could eat some good steak before I died. I remembered all my memories throughout my life. They're already here? I saw that there were a large group of scary looking men all in a bundle walking toward me. If they beat me up, I won't look the same afterwards. I was terrified, but then I realized that the thugs were acting a little funny. Uh, who are they? Huh? They're not his friends? As I continued watching quietly, a woman showed up in the middle of the crowd. Let go of him. She was beautiful. Hmm? I feel like I know her. Maybe not? It's been a while. Huh? Are you the girl at the park? You remembered. I came back to repay you. Thank you for saving me. I really appreciate it. You're really that girl? I'm actually the daughter of the gang boss that has an office right here. Saw everything from the window. She pointed at a building with way too many security cameras for its own good. Maybe it's a Yakuza office? So the bulky dudes are her soldiers and... She's the daughter of a Yakuza member? Gang? No, no, no way! I'm the daughter of Ruawa gang leader. You realize what you too will go through if you lay a finger on my savior, right? Uh! If you don't want to experience pain like you've never felt, you better beg for mercy and leave. I'm, I'm so, so sorry! The two were trembling from the big men cracking their knuckles. They were on the ground faster than you could blink and they were gone just as fast. I was just stunned at the whole situation when the girl turned back at me, looking beautiful again. She grinned. <laughs> I would like to repay you for the occasion you saved me. Huh? You mean, in your office? Um, I, uh... I was halfway dragged to the gang office and she explained what happened when I saw her at the park. Apparently, she, Reira, wasn't a fan of her dad and she was defiant about carrying on the family legacy. When she was stuck inside, she started realizing the joy of being a nerd. Remember how I looked like a high school student? That was just a cosplay. Cosplay? She had just returned from a cosplay event when she was mugged. Then I helped her. I got in an argument with my dad, but we came to an agreement, and now I help him. I see. I'm just a craftsman, so I'm glad to hear that you're working hard. A craftsman? Yeah, my company is just so 
bad that it forces me to work overtime constantly. My life just doesn't ever improve. <laughs> it's pretty miserable. I want to quit, but I'm worried I won't find a new job, so I can't. If you don't like your current job, would you like me to introduce you to some people? Huh? But I'm not really versed in Yakuza business. Oh, it's not like that. I know a few people who started their own business through cosplay. They have good companies and they have good benefits. They won't treat you bad, so don't worry. I was surprised and unsure if I should ask her for help, but I probably would miss my chance if I leave her here now. Thank you. I guess I could use the help. Of course. Let me pay you back. I found a job very quickly without any hiccups after she introduced me. I didn't know that this kind of job existed in the world. In addition, she showed me a nice cheap apartment that I could rent. I told my parents, and of course, they freaked out. How dare you leave us? What about money? You're abandoning us? We raised you! I paid you both so much more than I needed. Let me go. You two figure it out. I won't rely on you two either. My parents tried their best to keep their cash cow around, but... Is this all of it, sir? Yes, it is. Thank you for helping me out. No problem, sir. You helped the lady. Don't thank us. The Yakuza folk came to help me move, and they were frozen in place the whole time. You're not happy about your son growing up? You call yourselves parents? It yelled at them, and that was enough to keep the quiet the whole time. All right. Bye-bye, Dad. Mom. I hope you two stay healthy. I started living alone, and I was finally able to feel like it was fun to be alive. Thank you. Without you, I couldn't have started my own life. Don't worry about it. I need to thank you for helping me that night. Oh, there's actually a cosplay event sometime. Would you like to go? Of course! I would meet up with her occasionally and geek out or take photos for her in her cosplay. We get along to this day. I'm glad that I helped you at the park. You say that I saved you, but in reality, you saved me. I hope we can keep getting along. And part of me kind of hopes one day, maybe we'll be more. I'm sure with all the scary looks I'm getting, it won't be an easy road. My name is Kazuki Harayama. I'm 35 years old. I grew up with my mom after my father passed when I was still a baby. We lived in a tiny apartment with little to have, and I never felt like it was a problem. I think it was because of how bright and positive my mother was. My mom worked at a nursing home. It was a pretty tough job with at least one or two night shifts every week. No matter how tired she was after a shift, she always cooked me homemade meals. Thank you for your food. <laughs> Eat up. Your happiness is my happiness. I knew that I couldn't make her disappointed, even as a child. I knew that I had to work hard. After graduating middle school, I started looking for a part-time job. I had to make some kind of income and support my mother financially. Ah, clean up. I like that. I can work at my own pace. I'm not good with people and I like cleanliness, so this job was perfect. There was someone who would always ruin my day. Tanimura, my classmate. Yo, Kazuki! You cleaning toilets at your part-time job again? If you want, I can let you wipe my toilet too. <laughs> Tanimura's family was quite wealthy. Apparently his grandfather was a doctor and made it big on insurance sales. And he was just such a rotten guy and he would only talk to brag about how rich he is. Discounts? I never buy things on sale. Those are for poor people. It's a little annoying when your parents are CEOs because there's always people coming in and out. They keep greeting me and... There's just an unlimited amount of gifts that keep rolling in. Among other things. He would brag even though he himself hadn't accomplished anything. This is an Omega watch. He just wanted to show everyone how financially well off he was compared to them. I would always get teased or bullied by people in his group. If you're that good at cleaning toilets, you should be able to clean with your bare hands. Right, Kazuki? Why would you buy me bean bread? If I say buy me bread, I obviously mean chocolate. I didn't care what he did. I made sure he knew it didn't faze me. If I did something back, he might affect my mom, and I couldn't have that happen. However, there were days that I couldn't handle it. He just keeps doing whatever he wants, and here I am having to deal with it. 
When I told her how I felt, my mom held my hand and cheered me up. I'll contact the school, okay? You're not allowed. Maybe that helped him slow down for a little. But we kept working at it as a team. My mom worked, I studied and worked hard at my part-time job. We both did what we could. It was when I was in junior high school. The nursing home that she had worked at was going to be under new management. But there's just nothing we can do in our powers sometimes. The facility will be under the Tony Mora group? Yeah, something called an M&A. I knew the management was having a pretty tough time keeping things running. Apparently, they had been bleeding money and it was tough getting new employees. They didn't even have anyone to take over the business. Then, the Tani Mora group bought out the company. Not a bad thing. The problem was who was buying them out. My very own mom would be working under the company of Tani Mora. I felt like he was going to do something bad. My gut was right. Tani Mora immediately knew about the purchase. You better respect me even more than before. If you fight back, I'll fire your mother in a heartbeat. <laughs> Tanamora started up again, as you can imagine. It all started up again. However, all things must come to an end. The day of my graduation, Tanimora talked to me. Hey, Kazuki. After you graduate, you should work for us. I'll use you and your mother. Yeah, you must be crazy if you think I'm going to work for you. I was bold because my boss had admitted that I had worked hard. He asked me to become an employee, but this made him even more angry. Excuse you? You have the audacity to turn me down? I don't know what the angry Tanamora did, but he forced my mother to quit. I'm sorry, Mom. It's because I pissed him off. It's not your fault. I figured I'd quit anyway. I could just find another job. I was saved by my mother's kindness again. After I graduated, I started working as an employee at the cleaning company and started learning how to clean things again. I've heard great things about you. It's incredible what you've achieved considering your age. I look forward to working with you. Thank you, sir. The cleanup industry was growing and according to my boss, many employees go on to start their own companies. There was always a shortage of people on site. I just worked as much as I could. I didn't care how bad it was. I never turned it down. I got there first and left there last. I wanted to make sure the customers were satisfied. A few years later, I was invited to go to a high school drinking party one day. When I went there, Yo, what's up, Kazuki? You're late. It was Tanimura's marriage party. I remembered getting something in the mail about it. I, of course, turned down the invitation. My classmates kept apologizing to me in the back. They were probably ordered by Tanimura. I was about to leave because I didn't want to deal with it when, Come on, don't be like that. Tanimura started talking to me. Apparently, he was doing well after taking over the Tanimura group. I bought a new car the other day. A Cadillac. You want to take a ride on it? I laughed when I heard this guy's yearly pay. I was actually impressed with how someone could be satisfied with that amount of money. <laughs> Apparently, his wealth didn't round him off. It made him even worse. That's okay, then. I can play that game, too. I actually had some trade business as a side gig, and it's going well. My office is actually in Maranucci. I'll show you my office if you ever want to see. Really? What a coincidence. My office is actually in Maranucci, too. Everyone was visibly shaken by my words. Huh? S seriously? Where? What kind of work do you do? I'm in the cleanup industry. They all started laughing after they heard me. Cleaning industry? You still do that? And you call yourself a man? I knew you did that as a part-time job, but you still do that? That's pretty impressive in its own right. I felt like this industry just really fit my personality. I had the expertise and the connections, so I started my own company. Tanimura continued to berate me and kept laughing. You're hilarious! You literally clean toilets for a living! You're pretty screwed, man! <laughs> really? I think I made the right choice capitalizing on my expertise. Then let me see your dinky little office. <laughs> sure, I don't mind. I'm okay whenever. Okay, 
then I'll swing by next week. <laughs> Afterwards, I invited him to my office and... What? This is your office? It was no surprise that he was shocked. The company office was located in the middle of all the biggest business buildings. It wasn't just a nice building. We had cleaned it from corner to corner, being in the cleaning industry and all. This is our main branch. We have franchises around the country and... Tanamura really wasn't listening to anything I had to say. I just kept talking. We do everything from housekeeping to organizing furniture for people who have passed away. We really do it all. Our professionalism and excellence spread far and we received job offers from everyone, including celebrities. Business was booming. We actually started really succeeding recently and I now make almost 300K a year. Show me your office. You're in the Maranochi area, right? 300,000? Uh, uh, yeah, um, another day. Of course, I knew that day would never come. Tanimura's side gig was not successful at all. According to my secretary, Tanimura was fired from his parents' insurance firm. He apparently used company money in Vegas. Afterwards, he was invited onto a startup trading company. They apparently import goods from Thailand and they are barely squeezing by. However, I heard that the area Tanimura is responsible for is a little suspicious. It was just as my secretary had suspected. Tanimura was later arrested for illegal imports from Thailand. Mink import, huh? It was used by the company to run an illegal business. A few years later, he showed up begging for money. I'm begging you. We're both business owners, right? Can you invest a little in my next big company? Tanimura was also using his parents' connections to find other investors. When I heard how he wanted to run his business, I was filled with pity. Tanimura, that's literally a crime. You can't just bank on our money to bail you out. Tanimura kept trying to launder money. I have to contact the police now that I know about your plans. Police? Please, no! I'm begging you! Kazuki! Mr. Kazuki! Yeah, not my problem. Tanimura's illegal affairs were brought to light and he was arrested about half a year later. He really did only have his parents' money. I don't care though, it's just background noise. I had to focus on my job. <laughs>